So, we're here to take a look at a professional workstation class graphics card, the Radeon Pro WX7100. I don't know, there's nothing professional about it. The gaming benchmarks were terrible. <laughs> Are you saying that it's not good for a professional gamer? Not, not at all. Because I would I have mean, to agree with you. It's not meant for a professional gamer. The Counter-Strike frames per second, garbage. <laughs> and yet it's very expensive. What gives? Mm, I can't figure it out. So that said, this card is an amazing value. It is so good. It is, it is such like AMD is always so disruptive when they do this because, well, I mean, there's, there's not really a lot of competition in the market for professional class graphics cards and professional class is about VR development. It's about digital artistry. It's about bringing, like building the next generation VR experiences so millions of people will buy VR headsets. That is what it is about. It's about professional video editing, you know, native hardware 4K support. That's what this card does and that's why it costs what it does. It's actually a great value for people that work in the industry. Now, this was our first time looking at a car like this. We are used to gaming benchmarks because <laughs> we mostly look at gaming cards. But of course, now this actually, this will play games. Not great, but if you're into all those other things, if you're a developer for those things and you just want to play the odd game, it'll do it. You'll turn the details down, but it'll do it. But mostly this is, like we say, for modeling and creating you know, simulations and things like that. So it was kind of a new process for us. Uh, we did a lot of testing in Maya, and uh, we had some community people help us out from the forum who do this kind of thing for a living. They were pretty impressed with the Maya performance because they mostly use that. We also used Cinebench. Uh, we did some Luxmark testing, SpecView. We wanted to use SolidWorks, <laughs> but SolidWorks wouldn't give us a demo. They offered us a seven-day demo. <laughs> Yeah, so if you if you guys are using a professional class graphics card with, uh, you know, something like SolidWorks, let us know what parameters make sense. I mean, Maya comes with some sample models, and we mess around with that. And we're not totally inexperienced with workstation class graphics. We actually have done um, some types of, of workloads in the past that require workstation uh, type processing. One of the big differences is the performance of double precision floating point numbers which you see in scientific computation, some types of video computation, sometimes special effects, Hollywood, those sorts of things. And this card is designed for that. It's also designed for accuracy. So the drivers and all of the software, the full stack all the way down to the hardware is designed for delivering accurate renders and accurate results. And anybody that's ever used OpenGL on a gaming card with something like Maya will be like, well, sometimes the preview glitches and does weird stuff. You won't have those problems with a workstation class graphics card. Yeah, that was one of the big selling points from AMD. And from our experience, we have used some of the software before and it can get really frustrating <laughs> because it's so slow and it your system will just stop. Yeah, It won't respond to anything. And you can see the benchmarks that we came up with, they, they seem to be pretty good, but it's that the actual using of it that sort of convinces you. It's like, oh, I can spin the camera, I can change the lighting. I can do all these things and it doesn't take all day to respond to what I just did. Yeah, this is not something that you really see typically on a gaming class graphics card. This is, you know, fourth generation GCN architecture from AMD, um, but it does have hardware support for 4K encoding and decoding. It's DisplayPort 1.4 support, which means that you can drive a single cable 5K display off of this or two dual cable 5K displays. It's four DisplayPort outputs. So there's no HDMI, there's no other connector. There is a stereo 3D connector, so you can do stereo 3D output with the card that's through a DIN connector. Um, but other than that, you get four DisplayPort connectors. Oh, and AMD says this is the fastest single slot um, workstation graphics card that they've produced. And it is, you know, there are faster workstation graphics cards that you can get on the market, but in terms of the price, it's priced to disrupt the market. Yeah. This is, if you look at this in terms of like, hmm, I've been pricing video cards, this is expensive. But you don't understand that you're comparing this to cards that are way more expensive, way more expensive. And they probably will perform a lot better. But if, if you're looking at entry level, if you're looking to get into this, there are cheaper options, but this one's gonna be a sweet spot of being able to do pretty much anything you want it to do and performing well enough to not cause that frustration that we talked about when you have these really demanding programs and a lesser card, it's just the experience is going to be a lot worse. Whereas this is going to be a pretty good spot to let you do what you want to do without frustration 
And then the renders, yeah, they might take a little longer than those $10,000 cards, but those are $10,000 cards. <laughs> Let's run through the specs on this real quick. This is, of course, like I mentioned before, the fourth generation GCN. That's 2304 stream processors, 5.7 teraflops. We're talking a peak clock of 1243 MHz with a standard clock of 1188. It's got eight gigabytes of GDDR5 on a 256-bit bus. That's a 130 watt card, meaning that it's gonna be a single six pin power connector. Of course, it supports AMD FreeSync. It will support Crossfire. You can actually run up to four of these uh, in a system to actually get you know peak performance for 4K video streams or whatever you might be doing. It does have full 10 bit color support, full support for DirectX 12, OpenGL 4.5, OpenCL 2.0, Vulkan 1.0, Windows 7 and 10 are supported, as well as Linux 64-bit. Now, the AMD GPU Pro driver was not quite where I wanted it to be for this video, so we're not gonna be doing the Linux review in this video because there are big changes coming with AMD GPU Pro and the next version of Mesa. And I'm not sure if I'm supposed to talk about that yet, so I'm not going to talk about that, but there are big changes coming with OpenGL on Linux, and it's gonna be great, and there's probably gonna be another video on that very soon. Now, as we say, we have a little bit of experience with this kind of thing. We've done some work, but this is definitely not our thing. This is sort of new to us. So we would love to hear from you. Like we said before, if you're a developer, VR developers, we're very interested in hearing about that because VR, it seems like whether or not VR succeeds is gonna be based on people doing VR development. Somebody has to create those worlds. Somebody has to create a world compelling enough for my grandma to put on a VR headset. Uh, to, pay $700 for a <laughs> VR headset and a card to drive it. So, uh, you know, those prices will come down, but the, the realities have to be compelling. And unless you make them compelling, then I don't know if VR is gonna catch on. <laughs> this card will help you make them compelling. And you can get a very good living out of these kind of, you can, modeling, that kind of thing, VR development. That's, it's not a bad career to go into, <laughs> especially if you're gonna start working in film or whatever. Pretty much everything these days, CGI, this is how it's done. Well, let's talk for a minute about the benchmark that we did with Maya. We actually spent many hours, almost a full day with Maya doing all sorts of different benchmarks, animation, fluid simulation, high poly count models, the whole nine yards. Now, Maya is a frustrating program to use. It crashes a lot. <laughs> That's not this card's fault. <laughs> but it was doing that before we installed Radiant Pro. <laughs> yeah. This card does minimize some of the frustration by making it do things faster than it would on a lesser card. Yeah, so we can get a preview, you know, just moving around the model and being able to get a preview, being able to preview lighting, uh, being able to, you know, do the computations as far as like the fluid dynamics preview uh, for what that's called. I mean, this is a really high poly count model um, of a dragon head. And it is, uh, you know, it's sort of beastly to move around with this, especially on like a gaming class graphics card but you know this workstation class graphics card had no problem chugging through it at all and the render times weren't bad either especially again compared to gaming class cards this is again you know people in the industry might be used to using much more expensive cards but for getting started it's not impossible to do the work on this one and the experience is pretty good it may just take a little bit longer to render but that for the price point, that's not a huge deal. Yeah, there are actually several other um, pro workstation graphics cards in the lineup, um, some that are that are under this one in terms of price and, and under in terms of performance. I mean, the, you know, you look at the raw performance and you say, oh, 5.7 teraflops, you know, there are gaming cards that will do that. I said, well, no, we're talking about the difference between single precision floating point and double precision floating point. Now that number is a single precision floating point uh, number, but in terms of double precision um, floating point performance, that performance is usually compromised on any kind of gaming part, but not on this. On this, you will see a very high performance, double precision floating point, which matters a lot for video production, video special effects, 3D rendering with Maya, the whole nine yards. Now we're talking about pure computational horsepower. And another way that you can measure that is cryptocurrency. <laughs> uh, you wanna make a little money on the side, well, with Bitcoin being as high as it is, that whole electricity cost to return on Bitcoin is getting closer and closer. So <laughs> AMD is the leader there, so you know. <laughs> yeah, and this kind of card is going to outclass any gaming card in terms of generating Bitcoins. <laughs> in terms of just, just generating them. Well, I mean, there are, there are single precision Bitcoin algorithms, so I don't know. That would be, that would be interesting. I don't know if the Bitcoin op uh, algorithms have been optimized for single or double precision. 
Maybe. Yeah, maybe you can do that. <laughs> Might be a lot of fun. It is kind of pricey, but Bitcoin's also at a record high. So, and it's single slot. So that's good. That's good too. And you can run up to four of them in a system. It's definitely true that AMD is leading on the price value comparison. And you don't have to look any farther than the, the tractor trailers and tractor trailers of AMD graphics cards that have been sold for Bitcoin mining that exist out there. Wrapping up with this card, there's a link in the description that has the full benchmark rundown for this card so you can see how your card is going to perform in different workload scenarios. I really do think this is a tremendous card for working professionally in the industry. So if you're a student that's getting ready to get out into the industry or you're somebody that's, that's getting started in the industry and you're not sure what workstation class card to buy, this one's near the top of the end for AMD for professional workstation graphics, but it's really an incredible buy for how it performs. This is also our first foray into trying to review a card like this. And uh, we would like to do more of this. It's a very interesting thing to look at all that software and see how these cards function. So if you have insight into that, we'd love to hear from you. Tell us what we did wrong or what we need to talk about next time. Yep. Because we do hope to get more products like this that aren't just gaming cards. Yep. And we're going to have this, this card for quite a while. So we have opportunities to produce more content with this card. So if you have any ideas, you know, join us in the forums at Level 1 Techs and let us know what your thoughts are. Let us know what we should cover. And you can definitely look forward to good coverage of AMD GPU Pro and the Mesa updates that are coming for Linux. I'm Wendell. And I'm Ryan. And we'll see you in the forums at Level1Techs.com.